So whilst I called it Facebook versus Instagram, because that was the easiest way of, um, I guess, naming what we're doing today, what we're actually doing is we're looking at lots of businesses and we're looking at their full content plan for a month. So I'm looking at how they use, particularly Facebook and Instagram, because those are the two main platforms that most of these businesses use. And I'm looking at how they plan in their content what kind of content it is they use and why, so that then you guys can hopefully take that away and have a look at basically how you can use those channels a little bit better and obviously use maybe um, to help you guys do that. So um, I'm Donna Callender. If you've got any questions, um, jump straight in the Q&A. But otherwise, um, yeah, we've got tons to cover today. Here we go. So um, these are the businesses that we're going to cover. So this is over the course of roughly about a month. Um, We're looking at some independents or smaller businesses, one online, one physical. And then so that's my expert midwife. We're looking at the Bath Brew House, which is basically a bar. Um, And then we're looking at some biggies. So we're looking at um, Superdrug and The Range, which I'm quite excited about. Um, And then we're going to look at some national content ideas for the next few weeks. But essentially, it's how all these businesses plan in their content for the month. Look at um, how how they do it, what they do, what the tactics are, and then what you guys can um, take away from it. So um, we have 79.1% of consumers in the UK spend over an hour on social media per day versus the 90% of businesses that have active social media accounts. So remember, guys, it's where people are. Our job is to help you guys get more active and help you guys learn, I guess, you know, the different things that you can do, A, to make your life easier um, on social media, but B, to connect um, <clears throat> with your customers. So I've got a bit, a bit of a throb in my throat today. And this is how I've done it. So I wanted to show you, this is how I basically found all of this kind of stuff. So I use the Maybe platform, I plug in a retailer, and then this is Superdrugs. This is one of the brands that we're going to talk about today. And basically, we this is their content calendar. So you can literally do this for any other business. So if you're looking for any way to figure out whether what you're doing works versus another business, this is it. So you go on to the Maybe platform you put in the retailer um, in your content calendar. And then here you would see their previous week's worth of content or their previous day's worth of content. Um, so as you can see, they've got the light blank, the light pink even and the blue. So we know that they focus much more on Facebook and Instagram. And what I'm going to do to you guys today is basically explain to you guys how they do it, what they do, and then what you can learn from that. And it doesn't matter what kind of business you are. Um, everybody should get some really good takeaways from this. But essentially what we always say is the best way of understanding um, what kind of content you should be using and how um, is to make sure that you're comparing and contrasting with other businesses that are in your field and indeed learning from other businesses that aren't. And this is what we do every week. So we help over 25,000 businesses get more out of social media. Um, we have um, we compare social media with any other um, business. We have social media tools and insights to help you guys use it more effectively. And then you've got people like myself on here um, on a Wednesday. You've got the team that come on and talk about Facebook ads and everything in between. You've got loads of amazing resources online as well. Right, I ran through that a little bit quickly because we've actually got tons to cover today. So remember, this is kind of over the course of a month and I'm kind of looking at basically how they use Facebook versus Instagram. So my expert midwife, basically what they are is they, as you can see here, they educate, empower, and they help people during pregnancy. So their entire business model is all around helping women who are pregnant get through their pregnancy and then into the birth and beyond. So they do advice, tips and classes, and they do um, lots of different things. So basically, but their job is to either, so they either sell products here, as you can see, or they promote their classes. Now, as you can see, they've got um, a fairly decent um, following, and that is because um, that this is where people are. People who are pregnant or indeed trying to get pregnant or have been pregnant before are on social media. And let's face it, they're looking for advice. They're looking for support. They're looking for community. They're looking for products to help. They're looking for ways of making, I don't know, their birth easier. They're looking, that's where people are. They're looking for inspiration. They're looking at influencers. They're looking at products. They're looking at brands. So social media is the right place for this as a business. Now, what they've done is they've actually pinned, um, they don't have a huge amount. So as you can see here on their Facebook page, they don't have a huge amount on their Facebook page. Um, So we're going to start with that. They don't have a huge amount on there in terms of, I guess, information. You know, the Instagram definitely is kind of where they're more at. However, so here, like their introduction, there's not a huge amount there. You know, it's, yeah, their health and beauty. Is that actually, you know, the right categorization for them? That's up to them. Um, 
But, you know, they, basically that's the interesting thing. So here it says the best thing is for your baby's skin is you. And then after that, our new skin our skincare range has you covered. So what they want to do with their Facebook is to promote their product. So they've kind of established that very, very quickly. Um, so they don't have a huge amount on their bio. However, really, it's all about their shop. So they want, as soon as you land on them, to go straight away to view their shop and to buy their products. So that is what, I guess, you know, the number one goal. If you think about what your goal is for Facebook, you need to have one. They want you to buy a thing. That's what they want. So if we go back to here. So I'm going to look at some of their best posts. Now here, what you can see is, so on Instagram, they actually have, um, so they've got 85,000 followers. And um, this post here has 411 likes um, versus, I guess, Facebook here, um, which has 39 comments and 13 shares. Now, this is really interesting. So what you'll see is that they tend to post across both of their um, channels the same sort of thing. They don't always, but generally speaking, they cross promote. So what you see on Facebook, they will put on um, Instagram. And again, that's something that people can do through the maybe platform you can choose. However, you can see they haven't really changed too much about it. So they haven't really changed too much about the actual post itself. They haven't, um, you know, particularly switched up hashtags or looked at tagging or anything like that, because actually what they've done is effectively a meme. It's they've created a meme that actually kind of works for their clientele. And we know that memes work best on social media. So when you think in both, I guess what I'm showing you guys is, is that the same post works because a meme works well on both platforms. A meme works well on Facebook and a meme works well on Instagram. A meme works well on both. So they've created something that ultimately works well for their um, clientele. And then we'll click on their Instagram because that should work easier. But ultimately, you'll get the gist that, you know, 39 comments and, and some shares. But ultimately, on Facebook, the two goals, the goals are quite different. So what I want from this, so parent who choosing to catch oh, vomit in your bare hands because it's easier than cleaning off the carpet. Now, they've created that because it is something that is relatable. It is a meme that works because they are focused on people who are pregnant or people who have already had babies. So it works. Memes always work. And for this, forever making you question how you're so comfortable doing things you previously deemed too gross. So yeah, we, you know, that's the kind of idea behind it. They also, interestingly, put all the hashtags underneath. So it's basically anything to do with antenatal, hypnobirth, anything I guess that you know that a pregnant person is going to be looking at is all underneath there. I would have probably put in things like motherhood memes and things like that, just to kind of add that in, because a lot of people are just specifically looking for memes around motherhood that they can tag in friends. But ultimately on Instagram, the goal of this is to tag. They want people to read this and go, oh my God, you know that my friend Susie had to deal with this last Tuesday and tag people in. So the goal of the Instagram one is to tag by tagging. They are inviting new people who previously didn't follow them to suddenly go, oh, that's hilarious. I'm now going to follow them. So that with the 418 likes, I think about, look, all these extra people who now probably didn't follow them before and now do. If you think about that off the base of just doing like a really simple post, that's it's fantastic. So that is why memes work well on both. So if you are thinking about cross and um, cross channel and um, posting, Think about what is going to work across both and things like memes, anything like that, um, anything that's humor related or kind of, I always say, um, hit people in the feels or hit people in the funnies. It always works across both channels. So going back then to the Facebook, as you can see, it's at 99 engagements. Now, what the what the thing with um, the goal would be with the Facebook one is for them to engage with it, a.k.a. like it but it is to get the comments. So again, they want people to tag people in. So that drives new people to it. But actually it's the shares. You get more, you're gonna get more out of the shares on the Facebook than what you would even on, you know, like them adding it into the stories, for example, on Instagram, people are a lot less likely to do that. And that's because that, that takes time. People on Facebook, are there because they love sharing stuff. They love sharing things that, uh, you know, articles, magazines, um, you know, podcasts, excerpts, people like sharing stuff, especially mums on there who want to share advice and want to share with other people. So that will have been those 13 shares will have garnered them a huge amount more reach than what just the likes would be. So that's the two goals. So Facebook, yes, they've posted across both and they've used content that they know works across both, but ultimately they've got two slightly different goals 
in terms of you know they both want to bring new people to them but in slightly different ways so it's just kind of understanding I guess the two roles of that post and then here so again this is really interesting so um Facebook they've used to direct people directly through to a blog and you can see it had two likes and two shares so here it says, um, you know, I think it's fair to say from day one, you become mildly, read with air quotes, obsessed with, and then it goes on about poo. I'm not going to start going on about this because it's, you know, we're, we're a morning show, guys. However, um, the idea is that they're basically saying in our blog, you will learn how to tell um, basically if the baby is constipated and, and get some remedies. So AKA what they're doing is they want me from, from their Facebook page. I'm already engaged. I'm already in there. I'm watching their stuff. They want me to go from their Facebook to their website, to a blog. Now, why do they want me to do that? They want me to do that because they want to move me around. They want me to do a thing. If I've not taken an action off their Facebook page, which before was to buy something from their shop, then what they want me to do is to go onto their face, their, go onto their website and read more to, and to get, I guess, more um, information on something. So that's to help me. If I'm worried about my baby and their tummy and that kind of thing, then I'll learn more about that. And then guess what? Guaranteed that blog will be full of links to book a class or pay for a product. So they're basically encouraging me to engage more with them, but in a different way. So off social media, back to their website. So remember, if you did that on Instagram, you're, you can't put a URL there. So you can't put that link there. So that link there won't directly link back. You can't, I mean, you can, but you can't link it. So the easiest thing to do with Instagram is to put that in the bio. Sorry, put it in there and then say link in the bio. If you want to link people directly through to a blog, but it does mean you are going to have to regularly refresh your bio. So just sometimes have a little bit, bit, bit of think about the roles of Instagram and Facebook. Facebook is a great place to post blogs, to post people back to blogs, but you just do a little excerpt. You wouldn't do the whole thing. And again, making sure that your blog has lots of, um, is optimized. So again, that's for um, search engine optimization, thinking about the keywords that people are going to be searching for, which would in this case be, you know, like, I don't know, poo, that kind of thing. So um, it's just kind of, again, understanding what the roles are. Now, Instagram here, they get most engagement on their reels um, and they use them to share things like the short like sort of tips and the usual quick tips that I guess you know like they're not going to be over explained like you would in a blog but it's almost a here's a snippet go to our blog if you want to have any more information so here you go There we go. So we're not going to go into that too much because again, it's morning. So um, basically this is all about, to be fair, it's not too bad. It's about squeezing a comb during labor and how it can provide pain relief. So this again is about adding value. It's the same value that would be added from a blog, but from Instagram, most people can't be bothered going to find the blog. Most people just want, in, it's instant gratification. They want to know now, which is the benefit of reels. So if, for example, you have created a blog or you've got a whole load of information on somewhere, that's great. Link it back to Facebook um, or, or Pinterest is actually another one, but link it back to Facebook. And then on Instagram, do a really short snippet of maybe the same thing, just explaining, you know, like you know, it could be um, like that, what she could have done is hold a baby up and said, you know, that if you would rub its tummy here, then you could find out this, that and the other. So it's about directing people to do the same thing, which would ultimately be buy a product or sell their classes. Um, but it's doing it in a slightly different way. So hopefully what you've seen from this business is that actually they use Facebook and Instagram very, very well but it's because they understand that certain things work across the same, certain content works across the channels, but it's for a slightly different reason. So understanding what, what do you want people to do? So I would always say, if you want people to share, and it's a meme, say, share that tag a friend that, you know, would think this is funny or disgusting or whatever it is. And the same thing on the other one. Okay. So it's just about making sure that you are coming across two people in the right way on the right channel and understanding the roles of the different channels. Now this, completely different. So this is a physical business, right? So this is the Bath Brew House. Now again, what I wanted to do is I'm going to talk about all the national brands at the end because actually we sometimes talk about the beginning. I thought, let's switch it up and we'll talk about them at the end. So we've talked about basically effectively an online platform. This is Bath Brew House. I want to be on here because I want you to come and buy my pints. That's basically what this is, okay? Um, now what you'll find is they share... Um, a lot of what we call static posts. A static post is literally a picture 
with a caption underneath it and they share them across both of their both the platforms so they share them across Facebook and they share them across Instagram um, they again do slightly better in, um, on Instagram in terms of engagement but that doesn't mean that they should suddenly stop using Facebook So here I'm just going to show you their Instagram. Because you think about what a physical business needs is, you know, a did, the Instagram is your shop window. It is a way of, if, I, if I've never passed your pub before, never passed your restaurant before, never passed your florist before, never passed, you know, your, your actual, you know, physical space, then Instagram and Facebook indeed are both the best ways of you digitally showing me what I can and um, what I can get when I go down there. So here, as you can see, they use it to show off, I guess, you know, like um, the fun that they had. So this is clearly obviously the coronation stuff recently. Um, they show off their food. They um, they have a bit of fun with it, as you can see here. They, they show their team. And as you can see, they also cross um, channel things. So here, that, that's a TikTok that they've then posted onto um Instagram, because again, TikTok has amazing, um, I guess, you know, like video and um, different sort of video options that you just can't quite get on Instagram. But here you see now pouring, Sidon have taken over their taps for a short while while stops last. Look at that haze. Now here, this could be elevated. Hashtags is so important. This should be location, hashtag location, hashtag bar location. Hashtag the the sirens that um, it might be a pale ale, it might be craft beers that you focus on, it might be anything like those things should all be hashtags that you should use because they are how you get found. This post is basically going to get posted to the people who are already on there and following, which is why it would get a smaller amount of likes and engagement. And then what you want is to attract new people to you and go, oh, that looks delicious. But with a physical location, you have to drive people to them. So it has to be within, you know, a certain, I guess, you know, radius if you like so going back you see here so sorry this same post got three um three engagements but it did get one comment which this one didn't get so there there goes what is the value of a comment well it's actually quite a lot really now looking at facebook and um, they actually mostly use facebook to really publicize their events Facebook is a great space if you are a physical venue or indeed you do online events. Facebook is a great place to publicize what you do. It's so much easier doing that on there than doing it on Instagram because Instagram, uh, you know, that yes, you can advertise that you're coming up live and, you know, you can show like some nice videos and things like that. But in terms of actually like knowing if, if with, with an event here, as you can see. So I can search for an event on Facebook. I can say, I don't know, this is Party in the City 2023. But for example, for me, I was looking recently for things um, to do in Milton Keynes, for example. So I would be searching for that. And then that comes up as my recommended events. So anybody who's engaged with their event on Facebook suddenly will start seeing more and more and more of their events coming up and will start to see more events within the area. So the more you actually put an event, if you're in a physical space, even if it is that you've got a sale on, it doesn't have to be an event event. It can just be that you've got, I don't know, a new product or I don't know, you, you're doing something, you're doing a sale or as I say, a promotion. You can do that as an event because it means that then when I'm Googling things or when I'm putting into Facebook or indeed Google things to do in an area, your event is much more likely to come up. So even if it's a sale, then I'm much more likely to go down and visit your sale if it, unless, it, you know, um, and if I didn't know that it was happening and I wouldn't know it was happening if you didn't have it as an event. So that's why Facebook is so good. It's also really good to understand the interest because then they could go on and they could do interested, going. And of course, you can also invite people. You can also boost the event as well. So you can advertise the event to wider people. So you might say something like, I don't know, you want to invite um, everybody within a 12 mile radius that is interested in. So if it's live music, live music um so that would pick, pick people you can pick you know like you can do it in more male or more female skew they can look at it um in terms of types of music and then again anybody who's looking it depends on how you categorize it anybody who is looking for music again they would be looking at this on the left hand side so that's why a bar or a venue anything like that is so important to use the events on Facebook so it doesn't matter really as much about the post it's about the events and then of course when you're in the event there's a discussion 
So that is where you find out all the information about what is actually going on. So normally what you would find in there is you would find um, lots of posts. So it would be the post about it. Um, so I've I've not put that I'm going, so that's why it's not coming up for me. But basically what you would do is you would see things like, this is the menu, this is um, this is what you can do, this is, what, uh, this is, you know, like the people that are going, this is what to expect. And if I've already said that I'm interested or going, then I'll get all those updates. So again, you're regularly talking to your audience. So that's another reason why a physical um, place is good. And of course, because look, you can actually like, basically it's a google map essentially you know that you're mapping it straight to you so you're publicizing your location so anyone who's looking within that location for things to do will find your event so that's why they use facebook really well in that regard um and then they use their instagram and um, and tiktok actually for reels so that is to show off what they have available give tips and entice you basically to taste their drinks so this is more like them showing off their team and humanizing their business which you can't really do with just an event on facebook so that's what instagram is for is very much for the people behind their business people buy from people and so i want to know what your team are going to be like to come down here we go So I absolutely love that for so many reasons. As I say, it is about the team behind the business. Your bar is, is, is only as good as your drinks and only as good as your staff. In fact, most physical venues are only as good as the staff. It is about the person that I meet on the reception. It is about the person that serves me my coffee. It is about the cleaner who has a smile on their face when they're walking around. If I've never been to your venue, I've got no way of connecting with that. You have to show me on social media and Instagram is one of the best places to do that. And as I say, they've created that on TikTok and then reposted it on, um, on Instagram. And it's just such a nice idea because you can see the bar. They're giving value. So they're showing me how to make an Aperol spritz. But ultimately, let's face it, I want them to make me it. I want to go down there and have that, you know, have the venue and all the fun. And they're enticing me down for summer. And as you can see, they have actually used some hashtags in this one. So hashtag bath, hashtag pub. Again, I would have gone a little bit more with that. But, you know, these things are all about learning as we go. Right. I want to go on to Superdrug now, the biggies. So they've got a very different approach. They're a biggie. They understand they actually have a very different audience on, say, Instagram and Facebook. Um, Facebook focuses much more on what I would say product um, and directing customers to their website. So people go on, they learn about a product and then they go to the website to find out more about it. That's what they want people to do. Whereas Instagram is about um, tips, makeup, beauty, fashion. That's more of that kind of influencer feel that's about inspiration and the same with TikTok. They want them to on, on Facebook, people are almost ready to purchase. They're trying to, you know, they're doing a bit of research. They're trying to find out more about something. On Instagram, it is inspiration, 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 inspiration. That's what they want people to look at. So it's again, thinking about what your product is and what kind of business you have and thinking about what do you want people to do off the back of each channel. Right. So here, I absolutely love this. Does everyone remember Timothy, right? Good old Timothy. Um, right, so this was actually one of their best posts. So this is one of their most engaged posts. Now, I think one of the reasons why is it's going back to, you know, they understand their audience and they understand on Facebook. They're kind of ready. They're at the point of purchase, I guess. You know, they're they're looking for something. Um, and what they've done here is they've done Timothy is back. So basically, this is um, uh, an image of Timothy. And um, so it's the obviously it's off the back of a brand name. Um, make the natural choice for your hair, um, a new range with a gentle formula. And then it goes on to all the details about basically why it's good. And then, of course, um, save money. Um, and you click here and um, like, save money on it. Now, that had, it's a shampoo, right? It's a shampoo that I think everybody has remembered at some point. 234 engagements, 52 comments, and nine shares. Now, I absolutely love this because this goes back to exactly what I was saying. If you know... What, the, what your audience want and that is product knowledge new products and to do something off the back of it okay to buy 
stick it all over Facebook. That is what this is about. So Facebook, having, you know, being able to do like the bullet points, being able to do the link, being able to do the little emojis, being able to show off the product. Um, it is taggable, it is shareable. And, and I guess, you know, this is going back to nostalgia. And I think the caption itself, you know, having that as a title, Timothy is back as a boom, you know, it captures your attention. So as you can see, people love it. So people have tagged people in saying, you know, I used to like that. I used to use it all the time. So, you know, it's a bit of nostalgia, but ultimately it's going back to exactly what I said, product. Facebook is great for product, but equally, it's great for getting people back to a website. It's getting people to take something and do it. Whereas, um, I guess, some of the other channels like Instagram, Pinterest, that kind of thing, people tend to want to just purchase, purchase, like off the back of the actual post. <clears throat> And then um, competitions work well on Instagram. So this, um, they did the same. In, they did the same one on Facebook, and that only got fifty-two likes on the Facebook um, competition. What is the same one on Instagram? You'll see. Let's have a look. Okay, so you see here, this is interesting. So we've talked about the fact that Facebook is all about product. Now, let's face it, Superdrug ain't known for selling Chanel bags, are they, right? But they are known for beauty products and actually relatively you know, inexpensive beauty products the majority of the time. As I've said, look at their Instagram, totally different. They are, it's, it's influential. They are all about making I guess like it's how to use their product so Facebook is about the product and buying it this is about how to use their product which is all about inspiration which would make me then go and want to buy it so it's two different audiences but ultimately kind of the same goal just in a different way this is that they've teamed up with um uh, what's it Cellier uh, Knightsbridge the UK's leading reseller of pre-loved luxury goods and it's part of their doing good feel so it's like a kind of good deeds kind of campaign if you like you want to give um, somebody the chance to win that bag um, and a thousand pounds worth of the beauty card points so head over to that original Instagram post so they did uh, they did one initially and it's telling you to go in there to enter and what to do um so what is interesting about this is exactly that this got what did what did I say? Fifty two likes on Facebook, Instagram, all about it. So this shows that that isn't what their Facebook audience want. Actually, theirs could have been you know they could have done a Timothy one, you know, to win a, I don't know a month's worth of shampoo. But here it is about product. It is about product, but it's about that kind of influential, on like slightly elevated. Um, how could, you know, that, that kind of, you know, like um, Instagram life, did I even say? And that's what a Chanel bag is, isn't it? You know, it's not something that everybody could purchase or even wants to purchase. Um, so, you know, it's aspirational. And again, all the other stuff that they do, again, is showing you how to use their products, how to make the most out of their products. Um, even here, it's exactly the same. You know, this would be, again, like, you know, thinking about like the, the, how, the different sections on your face and thinking about your contouring, thinking about your makeup. That is what Instagram is to them. So again, when you're thinking about doing competitions, I would definitely try the same one on both channels, but think about actually, what did you learn from that? Was it not the right product? Was it actually the right mechanic, but not the right product? Um, was it not the right service? And actually the other great thing is, is always see if you can team up with people, team up with somebody on a prize, team up with somebody locally, because it gets more bang for your buck because you get more reach and you get more engagement and you can, um, you get a lot of cross followers as well. The range. So the range, I love the range on social media. They're just great. Um, so the range, um, they have, um, what's it, seven, 783,000 um, followers on Facebook. Yeah, roughly that. Um, and uh, so that's in terms of likes. And then you've got 817,000 people follow this and then 80,000 people have checked in. Now, again, this is another interesting little bit. So why do you have likes, follows 
and um and check-ins so check-ins are great if you've got a physical store because again people do the, the people i'm not gonna lie people don't check in as much as what they used to do i think um, it's, it was something that was quite a big thing on facebook and probably not as much but people do do it um so you can encourage people to check in and again it just promotes it on their facebook page it says you know molly checked in at um you know the range in skegness for example um so it it publicizes where you are to other people on their page um it also means that you've got a more accurate understanding of who's actually checking in at your you know who's actually coming to your physical business which again is an interesting one um but here in terms of like so just because i like a page doesn't mean i follow it so i might like a page and i might go yeah like great but actually in terms of the like between instead of like and follow i would following a page again means that i'm probably going to be a little bit more engaged with it i can like it but if i follow it then i'm going to get their regular updates i'm going to get their feeds coming up um in my feed um it's kind of like you know everybody's got a friend on facebook and you wouldn't have even known that they'd had a baby for example because you've not spoken to them a while and if you've not spoken to them a while it means that you're they're not coming up on your facebook page and that's why you're not getting the updates if you engage with their posts they will start coming up on your Facebook more because Facebook knows you're interested in them. And it's no different to the kind of follow like kind of situation, you know, like it's adding as a friend doesn't mean, you know, you might have 400 friends on there. You're not seeing 400 people's worth of content. You'll be seeing like your top 20 or something like that. And then underneath that is all the people that you don't really engage with. So it just kind of, I just wanted to highlight that a little bit. Um, so um, Facebook very much um, focuses on the community side of things and images of products that link to the website where you can buy this. Um, so let's have a wee look. So Facebook is slow today. Um, so this is all for them about, um, basically, they're, they're quite famous for doing this. They take a picture of an aisle in one of their stores and then you can shop the products. So that's the great thing about Facebook now is that you can actually um, just shop the products individually. So I can look at that and go, oh, I love that serving bowl. I don't even need to ask any questions. I can just link directly to it. Um, here, you can see it on the side. So you've got the little carousel of all the products. And then here, it's, that takes you back to their product range. Um, they also have done a link in there. So that's to shop them in stores. So that then takes you through. And the pinned where this was, this was in Hemel Hempstead. So again, that's good to know because they don't have the same stock in every store. So again, if you've got multiple places and you don't have the same thing in every one, it is very good to, if you've got a, you know, if you've taken a picture of a specific area, um, make sure you see where it is so that then I know that that's in Hemel and it's it's only likely to last a week or things like that so that I know. Um, but they are, they're really, really good at showing off the new products that they've got in by showing their locations and then tagging in the product. So do you have a Facebook shop that you don't really know what to do? Um, you know, not quite sure how to use it, things like that. Come along to some of our sessions or use um, the maybe uh, help button. Because again, that's we've got tons of different things on all this, um, on all these, um, like different things like blogs. We've got training, um, and then we've got the live um, sessions as well. Where again, we talk to you about all things social media. So if you're confused about any of that stuff, just please come on and ask. But as you can see, people absolutely love the range on social media. People love going on and going, "Oh, I really want that." You know, they and they, you know, that everything is like it's all all about being inexpensive and value led shopping. So what better way of helping me? do that than buying a plate through Facebook for 149 ideal. Now Instagram is similar. So obviously they need to promote their product, but actually they utilize reels um to show which products they have in store. Oops, where have you gone? There you go. So um, basically, if you think about, again, the two rules, Facebook, very visual, that's great. But Instagram, let's face it, that's where the visual is. OK, so you see what we're saying? They use Facebook to show an aisle. They show some products. They tag it in and basically say, come and buy it. But it is, it's their summer range. Instagram, it's their summer range. 
but they're able to show products in a different way. So they're still saying come and buy it, but they're showing all the products all at once by showing it on a reel on a video. Which don't get me wrong, you can do on Facebook, but on Instagram it works really, really well. Now, again, one of the things that we can learn from them, if you do have any actual products to sell, they go into all the detail. They're so, so good on, on Instagram with this. And again, it's something they don't do as much on Facebook. So you can see that this is the um, gazebo. They even talk about the different colors that it's available in. They give all the detail that you would get on a website, which again, if it, it's, Instagram is all about instantaneous gratification. I want to know straight away where I can get it, how much it's for. I don't want to go searching for it. I don't want to, I, I don't want to go on your website. I want to know now. So here they've gone into all the detail. Here is the product code. Here is how much it is, Ooh, 449 pounds, um, with 25% off. So again, that goes back to that kind of fear of missing out. And then it's telling me what it's paired with. So it's giving me every single product on there. It's giving me every product number. So I just copy, copy and paste it, telling me how much everything is. So I know basically at a glance, on is a quick calculator, how much it would cost for me to get that entire set. So again, selling product, different way. So make sure, again, it's about understanding what you want to get out of Facebook and Instagram. And that is about making sure you're monitoring what content's working. It's making sure that you're seeing, um, I guess, who's engaging with what kind of content. It is trying different things. But ultimately, Instagram is great for doing things like this, visually showing how, you know, how your product works or how your place is, showing your team. Video content is king, 100%. Facebook, again, video content is king, but you can get much more clever with it. You can do much longer posts. You can link back to um, blogs. So you can get people to go onto the website to go and learn more. People are quite happy to do that on Facebook. Instagram, I want to know now. Tell me now. People love it. So thinking about your Facebook and Instagram, Let's have a think about what national content is coming up. So um, we're going to be doing like a roundup of the coordination and things like that, obviously coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we have lots of other um, national days coming up, national months coming up. So when you're thinking about, say, for example, you were to do a meme, you might want to do a meme around a specific national day that fits in with your target market. So maybe let's use that as an example. So here is our content calendar. If you haven't seen it before, this has all the tabs filled in up until December with literally all of the national days, months, weeks, campaigns um, that you can engage in. And this is basically to give you guys extra ideas for how to build content on the channels that we've basically just been discussing. So let's have a look at, I think I'll go for, I'm going to go for July. So that gives you a couple of months to actually get planning on what this might look like. So you might do some memes around this. This might be something fun. There you go. National Picnic Month. What more do you want? That could be anybody. That could be a personal trainer could do something on National Picnic Month. It could be a mummy group. You could be a fashion retailer. You could be a dog walker. You could be a, um, a cafe, a coffee shop, a bar. National Picnic Month allows people to talk about picnics, but what does picnics mean to people? It's about family, togetherness. Um, it is about, um, and then, you know, for, say you're geared at mums, it's about all the stress that goes into, you know, like having to pull everything together and then the kids don't even eat it and all they do is moan. Well, that was my, that was my experience of the coronation <laughs> weekend. Um, oh, was I doing exactly that? Um, so that's very much me. Um, but um, for other people, it could actually be about getting out and exploring your place. So it could be that you're a bid or you're a shopping centre and, you know, you're outdoors and it's talking about actually, you know, like getting people involved in a physical event. You could do an actual event for picnic month um, or you could make some funny little memes um, around, you know, picnics, for example. Um, and that could be that you're a sandwich shop and actually you want to promote your sandwiches. But it's about taking these things and going, right, can I use this somehow um, to create some really good content? Um, 
Plastic Free July is obviously something completely different, but Plastic Free July is an amazing one. So could your business go plastic free for the month? Do, are you doing a plastic free initiative? Are you already an eco business that focuses on that? Are you actually a business that is purely online and you don't use any plastic at all? Actually, you know, this, this could be something that you're just interested in and you want to use and build content around and topics. Again, Facebook would be a great place of doing polls, would be a great place of sharing articles, of sharing stats, of sharing um, infographics. Instagram is where you might go on and physically show your product and talk about, you know, um, why, you know, I don't know, why you've reduced your plastic by X percentage over the last year and um, how this straw works better than this straw and you know all those kind of things that is a much more visual platform so again it's talking about the same thing but just showcasing it in a really different way now we want to help you guys do all of this stuff this is why we do this every single day so we've got you can schedule you can advertise you can report you can learn from any competitor as i showed you guys at the beginning but again if you want to learn any more about any of the platforms um well for mondays how to use maybe the live drop-in session, uh, Tuesday social media basics. So that goes back to some of the stuff we're talking about. If you're worried about how to use hashtags, worried about how to use a reel, anything like that, go on to that session because honestly it is gold dust. Wednesday is me. Um, again, if there's anything that you want me to cover, please just, you know, give me a shout. Um, Thursday is ads for beginners. So if you've never done a Facebook ad before or an Instagram ad or anything like that, then it is, you know, like where you go on and you can learn a thing. And then Friday's advanced ads, if you already dabbled with it a little bit and you want to learn a little bit more, go on there. And then we've got so many pieces of video content, I cannot even tell you, which is why I always have a frog in my throat when I do this every week, because I've already recorded hundreds of videos for you guys um, on how to do a thing, whether, whether it's um, whether it is something to do on Facebook, something to do on Instagram, you know, anything like that. So key takeaways. Get trying the different channels and monitor your best post or maybe so actually look at your different channels and go onto your dashboard and see, is it Instagram that's constantly coming up? If it is brilliant, use Instagram more, but that doesn't mean you forget about Facebook. If you've got any engagement on Facebook, you need to work out why and you need to do more of that. If you're time poor, link your accounts. People always worry about linking their accounts. Just link them. That's fine. You link them on, um, you know, link them through Facebook, for example, and you can link Facebook and Instagram. But make sure you tag appropriately. If you're doing the same content, make sure that you're planning your content in and you're tagging, you know, so at, at the same business might have a different tag on Instagram than Facebook. So make sure that you're constantly checking that. Make sure you're using the right level of hashtags. Make sure you're tagging in your location properly. So cross promote, that's fine, but just make sure that you know what you're doing. Use reels and video content across both channels. But again, think about what you want people to do off the back of both the channels. So as we've discussed, Facebook is an amazing place to give a lot of information and to get people back to your website, to get people to take a lot of different actions, to get people to share information. Instagram is a great place for inspiration. It is for um you know, making me really, really want a product. And it's a, it's a great place for tagging in people for things like competitions and memes. Engage, engage, engage. I cannot describe to you how many businesses post and then don't do the fundamental bit, which is the engagement part. If you're just posting and you're not going on to Facebook groups and commenting, you're not replying back to your customers' um, comments, you're not reaching out if somebody follows you and saying hey thanks for the follow can I help you with anything if you're not replying back to people that tag you if you're not um if you're not engaging within your place and engaging with other businesses in your place you're not going to get the same reach engagement or value from your social media that you would get otherwise and actually that could cost you sales so it is so so important So set up your account if you're not already on maybe get started you can get started for free um, and you can literally start comparing straight away. So as you can see, this is the dashboard and you can do all the things I've just described. You do them all in one place. So there's your content and um, there's your comments and um, there's your mentions. And um, so that is basically you reply back to people directly through the platform. You're not even having to sift through everybody and um, engage. And then there's your ads as well. You can start to build up audiences, etc. Just monitor and manage it all in one place.